Today's True Fire Artist Spotlight is Eric Haugen. Eric is an accomplished guitarist and instructor, specializing in composition, subtlety, and tone. His published lessons in tablature include traditional guitar heroes, as well as the more obscure players that serve as his strongest influences. Today, we'd like to feature three free lessons from Eric's Guitar Zen series, Guitar Zen Caged, Pentatonic Double Stops, and Playing the Changes. Okay, in this chapter, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to start with our open position pentatonics, with like the chords we've known forever that we thought of as being for beginning playing, for being when we didn't know that much, and that's true, and then we moved up the fretboard. We're gonna, if we're going to, though, relearn the fretboard and see things in this way of like, if this chord, then this pentatonic scale makes sense to start in the open position. I also like to start in the open position because it's a little bit humbling for people. Do you know how to play a D minor pentatonic in the open position? Maybe, maybe not. So it's, it's funny, it's a thing, our brain, our little brains don't like that, like, that there's notes that we don't touch. And so it's a fun challenge. And overtones in the open position. Are just delicious. Like I actually like I would actually be very happy with a five fret guitar. I would be totally fine. So that's why we start with this. And so we're gonna go over like C A G E D. Notice caged. It's kind of like a foreshadow that like hey these shapes that we're gonna learn going up the fretboard and then how to like let them soak in. We're gonna start in the open position. If this chord, then this pentatonic. And then once I've covered a couple of those. Then I'm gonna combine a couple of them together and play a, a very, very simple kind of chill, cinematic kind of solo because this, is, this stuff isn't about hot licks. This isn't about what our fingers can do. It's about what our brains can do. Join me, let's play a C chord. We all know this by now. That's how you play a C chord. I don't need to tell you how to do that. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna look at the open position major pentatonic that goes with that C chord. Let's check it out. Let's come back down. And the eternal truth here is that for the rest of your life, every time you play this chord, or any chord that ultimately looks like that, those notes are available to you as fill options or even lead options. Um, and yeah, you can probably recognize that is literally my girl. And so to put this information in our heads and in our hands, we want to combine it with rhythm. So let's take probably the most common chord strumming pattern that there is. I mean, I've taught thousands of lessons and thousands of songs. I swear this pattern is everywhere. Hence, I name it the ubiquitous pattern. Down, down, up, up, down. Notice, I don't know if you can see on camera, but I am tapping my left foot. I'm actually stomping my left heel. Because, yeah, groove it. Yeah, a wide swath of mid-tempo to up-tempo songs. That's going to be, that's the default setting. Um, and, yeah, I think it's important for us guitar players to have names for the strum patterns that we learn. It, it's our job. It's our job to know chords and grooves just as much as it is to know all the tasty, tasty scales. So to put this stuff all together in a way that's going to kind of teach your brain what's going on and maybe utilize it later on when making up songs, loops, playing with other people, whatever musical things we may do, we want to do one bar of strumming and one bar of very simple quarter note fills from that. I said quarter note fills. So we don't want to do the guitar player thing of Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is all about retraining our brain to control our fingers. So check it, it's super simple, it's very humble. I'm not trying to impress you right now. That's all it has to be. So that's one thing you can do. You can just, with no loop 
going with no backing track going. You can just calmly and relaxedly just strum a C. And the reason I, I recommend practicing this way is because it has us working all three elements of music at once. Rhythm, harmony, melody. Rhythm is the groove. Harmony is the chord, melody is the fill, as opposed to we know, we know what we do. We learn a scale and we kind of noodle around with it. Super fun. I will never tell someone to not noodle, but if we want to um, start to rewire our brain to see, you have a chord, you have a pentatonic scale. Boop, 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 boop. They're right there. They're right there next to each other. Now, just to show you how it will sound, perhaps in a track, let's go ahead and pull up that backing track and I will play along with that using this kind of idea. Track. Keep it rolling though. Now just play. Still quarter notes though. Okay, so in conclusion, in review, what you, what you want to do, you got your C chord, you got your ubiquitous strum pattern. So assignment one would be, yeah, ubiquitous with quarter note fills. And yeah, let go. Let go of your guitar player. Honestly, it's musician desire to impress yourself or anybody. This isn't about that. You will not learn a single hot lick from this series. What you will learn is, is a, a rewiring of your brain to see chord. You know, a chord is actually an opportunity of notes. It's not this tight thing. I know what we, what we all learned of. That's super cool, super fun. But what, we're, what I'm trying to do here is show you that it all can happen in the same place. And so to make it happen in the same place, it has to be simple for now, for now. It can get more complicated, but why would I do that with the first lesson in the series? So we're dropping in with a pre-bend. Uncle Eric loves pre-bends. Again, so I'm seeing that, that, that minor pentatonic. And that's a tricky one. Take your time. Jump. And then, for some reason, I felt triplety. But that's, yeah, check it. There's that minor pentatonic. There's that next lick. But then the coach over the shoulder, while I'm playing that lick, is like, that's cool, man. That's a cool lick. Watch out, though. You got an F coming at you. Because there's F. Ten. I don't like to call out Fritz. The tab's going to be underneath. I think you're fine. So I'm hanging on that F, and then yeah, the coach is like, yo, throw some double stops at that. 
So yeah, I threw these diagonals at it, that 12 and 10 there. And then he's like, hey dude, you got the A minor coming again. Because there's A minor. And I just left it for a bar because I was like, oof, I just threw a lot of notes out there. Let's just let it hang back for a minute. And I'm like, all right, where's some A minor pentatonic? And notice, by the way, I like to, this came from watching Les Paul. I got to see him at the Iridium Club. Oh, this would have been like year 2000. I, I noticed this thing I picked up from watching him is when he would go to the low string, he would pop way back to get clarity on it. Because watch, if I was still up here, it's really woofy. So watch that. Sometimes I'll, I'll play, I play around a lot with my picking hand. Angles this way, that way, and this way. It makes a difference because, again, I don't play fast. So I use whatever I can at my disposal to be expressive. So there we are. Two, three, four. Minor pentatonic lick. Coach says I should throw some double stops at F. That's a classic one for that structure. Throw some more. And then I throw some more, more of a run, just I don't know why, I, I guess I was, there's no reason sometimes. Did it, yeah, that's a pentatonic, little bit of a sequence. You know, again, I love simple sequences, I talk about this in other lessons. When I have a little do 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 then you're going to hear me go. Do, 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 do. It's an improvisational technique. You're like, oh, I like that little motif I got. So that was like a big, simple sequence out of that structure of A minor pentatonic. And this is straight out of Little Wing. Again, my, the coach over the shoulder is like, dude, you got F. So I'm seeing, you know, that, that F chord, that major pentatonic again. By the way, I got um, Walrus Audio Harmonic Tremolo on for this one to give it that warble, that univibe type effect. Which makes sense if I'm quoting Little Wing. And that's one of those pedal steel guitar licks, really. 12 goes up. And then you get all the way to that 13. And then when I came out of it, I get that 12 because now I know, again, Coach told me, there's my A minor. And again, I'm, yeah, I've thrown this lick out. There's that lick again, though. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I snuck it through the whole course. So I'm one, two, three, four. That 13 there because I'm seeing that F. And then I come back, one, two. And so I kind of like, yeah, let it float out on this 10 and 10, which is really what's that, an A and a D. So there it is against an A tone. What would that be against an F? That makes like an F6. Yeah, that works. That's cool. Have fun with that one. All right, so we're going to drop in here. I'm thinking about this B-flat, and I think you know this by now. If I'm thinking about a chord shape, the next thing I think about the next layer is... Where is... My major pentatonic? And then, ooh, can I do some pretty double stop thing? Maybe I can. So that's my, what I drop in there with. You can see that there. There's the chord. That's a, that's a Hendrix double stop. And then the next chord, though, is the F. And I'm seeing this F. Again, that is a C-shaped F in the cage system. I have videos about it. It's really how I navigate everything. Every lick, every triad, every arpeggio, anything that I've ever learned or played one way or another 
breaks down into that system that there's the shape. So yeah, B flat. The F. And then my brain's like, where's G minor? Just goes to the obvious spot. Here's G minor. There's G minor pentonic. Just a, yeah. E flat. It's right here. Maybe a little major pentatonic note. Let's check that first line again. Pretty. Again, with stuff like this, I always say, like, you know, just take that first little section there and loop that over and over like like play it over and over like real slow just real clean you know i've said this in other videos like there's nobody making us play stuff fast and sloppy but ourselves just like take it easy man <laughs> take it easy so you can hear every note because this instrument doesn't you know, it doesn't want us to play clean. Those these little wires are close together. It's really, it's really easy to clunk a note or choke a note. We only get better when we really just give ourselves all the time that we need to play it clean. All right. So the next four bars, I'm up here on this B flat. Caged. There's an F. So, yeah. And then I do this. You'll see me do this throughout my entire life. This is one of my favorite little double stop things. So if I'm on a G minor... Again, these are cage shapes. I have classes on it. This is just one that I learned that you can do. The G is up top. You do a little. I love that. It shows up everywhere. I can do it anywhere. Where is it over here? Where is it on this G minor? It's one of my favorite little pet things. And then on the, this is tricky. On the E flat, I'm actually kind of just playing out of B flat still, just because the melody was pretty. And that's a n new thing that I just started doing, doing a bend. And then, uh, literally only started doing that like a month ago. I really like that sound though. You're like, no, it's already up and then it gets one more. I really, I'm sorry to the, the tabbers who are going to tab that out. I don't know how you would tab that out, but yeah, that 13 goes up while it's held. All right. So that was the E flat lick. B flat. And now I'm at the next four bars. There's my F. Oh. There's the G minor. I'm seeing. So yeah, seven, three, and then the E flat, because I'm seeing this. And then I just keep going down. Here's a B flat. That's an F in first inversion. Great chord. This is one of those times that if you have a notebook handy, you should write that down. Be like, ooh, that's cool. There's the G minor. Now there's the E flat because these are caged shapes. I love that, that I, I walk down to this F, which is, I'm on that F that progression comes around but that's a note in B flat and then I'm just riding out 
Neil Young strum pattern. Again with a thump, thump. Yeah, thump, thump, strum. A thump, thump, strum. A thump, thump, strum. And again, if I don't want to get tangled in those wires, I'll let that pick roll back to be on the back side a little bit so I don't get too much of a... But everybody's hands are different, by the way, depending on the way your, your arms and hands are built. That might not work for you. Any teacher can only tell you what works for them. You know, talk to 10 guitar teachers, they're going to tell you 10 different things. It's just the way it is. So again, that's a classic progression to know when you're like, what should I do? What should I try some ideas on? What should I... Oh no, I'm in a room with other people. Well, theoretically, this is a simple enough and pleasing enough progression that, yeah, anybody would like playing along with this. <laughs> 